Good afternoon, and welcome to My World Science, where we discuss everything scientific in our lives. Knowledge is power, and we hope to inspire you to use scientific knowledge to make your life and the world around you a better place. As of October 22, 2019, the CDC reports over 1,600 cases of vaping product use associated lung injury, or EVALI for short, with 34 deaths. What is causing this outbreak? What is it about vaping that makes it so different than its deadly cousin, cigarettes? Help us shed some light on the vaping epidemic. Today, we welcome to our show Dr. Jamil Mamad. Dr. Mamad is the chair of the chemistry and biochemistry departments at Cal State Los Angeles, where he runs a laboratory that investigates how protein activities impact cancerous tumors. A graduate of UCLA in biochemistry, Dr. Babad went on to earn a PhD in biochemistry from UCLA before completing his postdoctoral fellowship in molecular biology at Princeton University. In addition to a distinguished teaching career in chemistry, biochemistry, and bioinformatics courses, Dr. Mamad has been deeply involved in various areas of research of cancer cells. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Mamad to our show. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, Kumar. Thank you. I would like to start off with your background. What brought you into science and why are you here today? I've always uh, been curious in um, the way natural things happen and um, had that curiosity from a very young age. And that deepened when I got to college, actually. Um, I was a chemistry major, and I also enjoyed uh, biology. But I felt uh, that there'd be a lot of great um, activity in the future with the combination of both biology and chemistry. So I decided okay. to combine the two into biochemistry. Yeah, of course. Chemistry is so essential to learning about how life works. Um, so I heard that you, of course, run a laboratory. Mm -hmm. um, what is it, what are you doing in that laboratory? So my laboratory at Cal State Los Angeles is investigating the uh, mechanisms of chemo resistance in breast oh. cancer. So uh, breast cancer, um, as you're probably aware of, is a major killer of women. It's the most highly diagnosed uh, cancer uh, for, for women worldwide. Wow. And a big problem is the um, is, is the resistance to therapies. And one of the therapies that's out there is called Herceptin. And uh, women that uh, are on Herceptin oftentimes get resistant to it, and we're wow. trying to understand the molecular mechanisms for that resistance. Wow, so not only can bacteria get resistant to antibiotics, but cancer gets resistant to chemo? That's right, that's exactly yes. right, yeah. Uh yeah, so um, with the increased government uh, regulations on the tobacco industry, they've now um, had another strategy, and that is to uh, go into vaping as a way to kind of sidetrack uh, regular smoking. And they've couched this as a way to get smokers that are currently hooked on cigarettes to get them to a, another alternative. Right. But um, the, the biggest problem, of course, is that uh, teenagers are starting to get into e-vaping. And um, it's predicted that out of those uh, folks that are below 29, uh, probably about 500,000 new cigarette smokers will come out ah. of the e-vaping um, right. epidemic because they will graduate from e-vaping to smoking. A sick kind of graduation. Right. But graduation nonetheless. Right. So that's, this, that's, that's a big epidemic that's going to be here in the future. What, why is it, do you think, that they would graduate to regular cigarettes from vaping, which I feel like, what, I guess they would want to keep it for being cool, but Regular cigarettes, I mean, do you have any idea of like why they want to go there? Yeah, so I think a certain percentage will just stay on the e-cigarettes, and uh, but, I think, uh, I, but I think it's the nicotine uh, yes. that is within the e-cigarettes which is going to cause um, addiction. And uh, it's, it's quite natural for a certain percentage of any population to want to try uh, the, e uh, the, the regular cigarettes after that. And 
the problem with regular cigarettes, of course, is, is we, we know that at least out of those 500,000, about 170,000 of them will die out of smoking-related deaths. That's, that is too high of a percentage. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you brought us some images today. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't going forward. There we go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, the previous image was just showing, you know, the type of vaping products that are out there. Um, a lot of them were made to look like cigarettes. A lot of them uh, kind of look fun. They have kind of uh, um, uh, beautiful structures to them, That's right. and they can attract uh, uh, regular smokers, but it also it can attract young people. And this is the insidious part of the whole industry is. Um, uh, the way it's being marketed to young people. And right. we all know the tricks that, 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 that that's happening. Like their advertisements, I know, um, the beginning of the advertisement says not suitable for children. Mm -hmm. And of course, teenagers are going to want to listen to something that they're supposed to not listen to be out of curiosity and a little bit of rebellion. Right. And the tobacco industry knows this. I mean, they have so much research on their own stuff mm -hmm. and they keep it from us. Um, what I kind of find amusing with the different models, I guess, is how some of them do look like cigarettes, some of them look like cigars and pipes, mm -hmm. and then some look like like lip like whistles. <laughs> yes, <laughs> look like whistles. Yeah. And of course, we have the most popular one that we all know of, the Jewel, the mm -hmm. one that looks like a flash drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they say that the flash drive design was to in intend so that smokers like wouldn't feel like they're smoking a cigarette, but that's, that's bull. <laughs> right. That's bull, and they know it. Right, right. So um, I want to talk a little bit about this article that just came out uh, this month, actually, that um, talks about the long-term effects of, of e-cigarettes. Uh, we've had very little data because of the newness of the entire in, in industry. Right. That um, this is one of the first studies that has actually shown some long-term effects of having uh, e-cigarettes. So what they did is they took mice, and they had them uh, exposed to e-cigarette vapor uh, five days a week, or four hours a day, for about a year. And they found that there was a higher incidence of lung adenocarcinomas, as well as bladder type cancers as well. And um, they actually took out the, the organs and, and uh, did some an analysis. And uh, both at the cellular level and also at the uh, gross anatomy level. And it's, it's very clear that these um, mice are actually getting cancer. And they weren't even actually like inhaling the machine that was making it, right? They were just around the vapor. It was just the secondhand yeah. s smoke of vaping. Right, wow. right. So this is an incredibly important study because it really uh, solidifies, I think, in my mind, uh, some of the first studies to demonstrate yes. that uh, these e-cigarettes are not harmless. Right. And one, of course, downside of studies is that it takes time to do them. So in the time, while we're doing studies currently, people have to just be preventative until we get data. But mm -hmm. of course, in the time that we don't have data, people are also just going to roam free and do whatever they want. Right. Right. So I just want to just uh, tell our audience members, you know, please pay attention to studies like these because um, I think it portends a major health issue for, um, for the world in terms of uh, lung diseases in the future. Yes, and of course one of the biggest issues with lung cancer is that it, it has such a high kill percentage, and correct me if I'm wrong, because people don't really discover that it exists until a later stage in its development, is that correct? So oftentimes you're correct, uh, Noah, that uh, the, the lung cancer isn't de depicted until much later, and, um, and by that time it's too late. I um, oftentimes cite a story of, uh, of, a, of a friend of mine that uh, was not a smoker, just coughed up blood one day, wow. and um, she was taking excellent care of herself, but uh, she found out that she had stage four lung cancer, and within about a year and a half, she succumbed to the disease. And um, I'm not sure if it's due to maybe secondhand smoke or, or just the, um, the way in which sometimes uh, uh, mutations occur within the DNA. 
But, I mean, it just tells you that you can never predict whether or not you're going to have a treatable form of the lung cancer. Right. So, uh, you know, try to preserve your lungs as, as much as possible. Yes. That's my, that's, that would be my advice to, to young people. Um, what are some of the intracellular mechanisms for preventing cancer? Yeah, so we actually uh, naturally have um, DNA repair systems within our cells that will repair damage to the DNA. And those systems uh, uh, help us to live as long as we do. Uh, however, uh, in uh, cancer and um, you know, e-cigarettes or, or regular cigarettes, the, these are, there are carcinogens that actually right make the mutations in the DNA and sometimes in those repair systems oh, themselves. So when it's in the repair system itself, then um, that will actually um, uh, cause those cells to start to divide and they are unable to repair their DNA. Right. And they divide uncontrollably. So it's, it's, it is a mutation process that occurs. Uh, let's see, the next image here. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Nicotine. Yeah, so I, I put this slide here because, um, you know, nicotine is in uh, e-cigarettes. It's also in regular cigarettes, and it is uh, the uh, cause for the addiction, okay? And, um, you know, as early as 10 seconds after a first puff, you know, nicotine is actually in the brain. That is really fast. Yeah, and also nicotine is found in every tissue of the body, including breast milk, and even for pregnant women, it can cause um, the fetus to be, to be hooked on, on, on nicotine. Hooked at an while early age. pregnant, that's yeah. one more reason not to do any kind of drugs. Right, so nicotine is, is probably the causative agent in the e-cigarettes, which is actually causing cancer in these mice as well. Wow. So um, in cigarettes you have nicotine as well as tar, and, and other um, what we call oxidation products, uh, products that are um, combined with oxygen. But in the e-cigarettes, it is probably the nicotine itself which is nicotine causing the cancer. Itself. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you're doing some research, and what do you think is, what could be the future prevention measures for cancer? Could cancer like, become just as dealable as infectious diseases are now? So uh, let's talk a little bit about cancer. Cancer is, uh, has just surpassed heart disease as the oh. major killer in the United States. And I think part of that is due to the fact that we have better treatments for heart disease. Okay, that's good. And um, people are living a little bit longer. And um, in terms of preventing uh, cancers, there's a couple ways that one can do it. Um, there's a component of cancers which is caused by viruses. So uh, if you can get uh, vaccinated for HPV, and hepatitis B and hepatitis C, uh, that would be one good way of uh, preventing cancer in the future. Uh, another way is to be very, very careful about what you breathe in. Um, that's gonna be uh, one of the, your lung tissue is gonna be exposed to lots of molecules in the air. Some of them are gonna be cancerous. If you can uh, uh, make that air that you breathe in as pristine as possible, that would be one good way of preventing cancer as well. Um, also, uh, don't expose yourself to UV radiation. Of course. And so that would be the, the sunlight, and so that's, that's another thing. And of course, your diet. Um, make sure you, you, you eat foods that um, uh, don't have pesticides or carcinogens in them. Yes. So uh, these are the ways that one can, can mm -hmm. probably um, at least um, delay a cancer as long as possible. Right. Um, uh, I have to say that there are some ways that we cannot prevent cancers, and that's through endogenous uh, systems that actually uh, will, will um, cause mutations in our, in our DNA. Okay. But in, certain, ter in terms of those that are exogenous, like I just talked about, we should be able to do our best to prevent it. Yeah. Um, let's see, there's another one, I believe, right, e-cigarettes, described e by the American Association for Cancer Research. Right, so the AACR is an organization that I belong to, the American Association for Cancer Research, and obviously they're very interested in, um, in preventing uh, cancers uh, as, as well, and, and, um, 
and informing young people about the potential hazards of cancer. And so uh, here, uh, the, what this uh, list is saying is that, um, you know, these e-cigarettes, it's a little bit too early to tell, but uh, for sure they contain nicotine, and nicotine should be avoided at all costs. Right. How, just how bad is it to be around, I mean, I know the mice study showed that it was purely secondhand smoke that was causing cancer. Right. How bad is it, of course, to also just be around these people who vape and who also do cigarettes? Yeah, so, you know, you can imagine that uh, you are going to be uh, breathing in the same things that they're exhaling. And a lot of the carcinogens that the uh, first-hand smokers are taking in, uh, they're going to be breathed out, uh, most of that. And, but if you're in the vicinity, you can take that in, and those molecules can kill you or, 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 or cause a health hazard uh, just as much as the first-hand people wow. can if you're, if you're around it. So um, it's all about the molecules that get into your lung cells and uh, basically damage your genome. That's really, yeah. that's really it. And if you can prevent that as much as possible, uh, you'd, you'd want to do that. Uh, I understand that, that there's a certain attractiveness to the whole enterprise uh, among young people. Um, maybe it's a nervous habit, maybe they're influenced by friends, but uh, I think 20, 30, 40 years from now, um, uh, I'd hate to say that, uh, that, that a certain percentage of those, of those students uh, will have lung issues. Um, that, that's going to be a guarantee. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's no getting around it. Uh, might some people be lucky to avoid it? Yes, some people will be lucky enough to avoid it, just like you have some lifetime smokers that somehow don't get cancer. But you're playing Russian roulette with a semi-loaded gun. And uh, I, 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 I can't emphasize enough to young people, you know, how uh, to that, you know, try, try to stay, try to keep your lungs as pristine as possible. I know this doesn't exactly correlate, mm -hmm. but would it be worse to be around or smoke mm -hmm. than it is to have what is now considered a healthy diet? Uh, well, uh, it's important to, you know, have a, have, so, so a diet, that's, that's, that's fairly controversial. There, there are uh. some known carcinogens in, in foods uh, that um, uh, any respectable um, uh, government is is monitoring to make sure it doesn't get into our food. So I think that's that we're trying as much as we can. There are some countries where it's less regulated, right? And um, and you do have some problems. So I talked a little bit. Um, I, I talked a little bit to my students about aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is a is a carcinogen that comes from a fungus that uh, that that's found in peanuts actually, and uh, in less regulated situations you could um, actually ingest that. And aflatoxin is a known, what we call, intercalator. So it will actually, it's a flat molecule that will um, reside between the, the base pairs of the DNA and actually cause uh, changes to the DNA and cause mutations. That, those mutations eventually lead to, to, to can, can eventually lead to cancer. And so it's all about keeping our genomes as pristine as possible. And, uh, and that would be my advice. Yeah. I guess the main reason that I brought up like diet versus smoking is mm -hmm. because I kind of wanted to say that if smoking is worse than having a bad diet, which I'm going to be confident and say that it is, mm -hmm. uh, it means that people who want to have vegetarian diets, vegan diets, or Mediterranean diets, whatever diet they think is going to help them, mm -hmm. well then they'd be a hypocrite mm -hmm. if they were to be around friends or people or themselves who smoke or vape. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I would, I would consider, um, just from my reading of the literature, the vast literature in, in, in cancer, in cancer prevention, that it's, it's, much worse to be around people that are, uh, that have secondhand smoke or 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 smoke themselves and have what, what would be considered a, a good diet um, rather than to have a good diet have a good diet well have a have a fairly poor diet and then you know start smoking so I think I think smoking just doesn't compare yeah yeah it is, think... it is it is it's 
been proven time and time again to be um, a cause of many types of lung diseases, including lung cancer. I think at this point I've realized that we've been slamming smokers a lot, mm -hmm. but now I think it's important that we talk about ways that these smokers can get help. Because certainly there's smokers out there who don't actually really want to be smoking, but nicotine is a powerful chemical and mm -hmm. we should probably discuss ways that those people can get resources to help them. Yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, there, there are um, psychological uh, uh, areas around that are, or, or websites there that you can actually go into and, 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 and find the links to and, and, get, and get professional help. And it's going to be just like any kind of other addiction. Um, uh, and, and it's going to have to be uh, partly willpower and partly getting the right counseling to, to, um, to remove yourself from that situation. I, uh, I've known people that said one day they decided to stop quit, they, they, they decided to stop smoking, and they were able to go cold turkey from that time on. Wow. And uh, that takes an incredible amount of willpower yeah. uh, for those people, but there are others that have to go through a stage process. But I think we have to worry about um, this idea of using e-cigarettes as a way yes. to get off um, because I think that they can be just as addictive and as, we, as the study that I showed before uh, indicates, uh, they can also cause cancer. Exactly. So you're not safe uh, by going to e-cigarettes. One well, thing that came to my mind is actually the various nicotine supplements and nicotine like gums mm. that are over the counter. <laughs> What's mm -hmm. the term? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't need a prescription for them. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how good are those? Yeah, so you know I haven't done a, a complete study of those uh, to be honest and and so I'm going to uh, say that you know that might be a stepping stone to get, a, to get away from cigarettes um, as long as it's only a stepping stone. Yes. There are uh, uh, cancers of the mouth that one right. can get. And I, I, I don't know the literature on the, um, the way that nicotine gum could possibly cause uh, those kinds of things. I do know that chewing tobacco for sure oh, yes. uh, causes uh, mouth, ca mouth cancers and, um, and, and, and that kind of stuff. And tongue cancers as well, throat cancer. But I'm not sure about those, these other products. Right. right. The bottom line here, I suppose, is don't start smoking, don't start vaping if you are not, and if you are, do whatever you can to stop it, and, be, and get away from people who do because you are impacting your health, you are impacting the years that you have to live, and if you're on your deathbed at 60 and someone tells you, hey, you could have another 10 years to live if you didn't do this in your life, how are you going to feel? We were very lucky to have Dr. Mamad take time out of his busy schedule to come and visit us. Thank you very much for joining us. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter or Instagram, at MyWorldScience. Think inquisitively.